Hi guys, what you are looking at right now is the brand new Sony ZV-1 Mark II. And you are also looking at West Africa here in the background because I've had this camera in West Africa for about a week shooting as much as I can for these tests. And check this out, I am touching the lens right now because the lens goes as wide as 18 millimeters, full frame equivalent, and it is an F1.8 to boot. I can safely say that with the improvements over the original ZV-1, this is the best travel camera that I have ever used. So let's talk about it. So a big thanks to Sony, of course, for letting me test this out before the release date. I had to sign an NDA. I am very important. And also a big thanks to Sony for flying me out to West Africa. That is the length they will go to to keep a secret. They knew if they left me in Canada, I would blab this around everywhere. None of this is true. I, of course, have paid for my own ticket to West Africa. Sony doesn't even know I took this camera to West Africa and they probably won't watch this video. So don't tell them because then they will never know. For real, they get no input on this video. They haven't done anything but send a spec sheet to me and this loaner camera, which I have to send back. And just in case I had designs on stealing and keeping this camera, they made sure to send me the wind muff that doesn't match the camera so it would look awfully foolish. It looks like my Sony ZV-1 Mark II has aged severely. He's very distinguished with his white hair. So of course I'll talk about the upgrades over the ZV-1, the pros and the cons as well. But first, let's just take the camera out. Do what cameras do, use it in the real world. And let's see what happens, enjoy. So now we're testing out the little ZV-E1 II. I believe that's what they're calling this. Anyway, and uh, this is how I would normally use it, using the HLG3 picture profile. And I use a Paul Leeming corrective LUT to get the maximum dynamic range I can out of this little one inch sensor. But this has a couple of tricks up its sleeve, like CineVlog, the same thing that is on the new Sony ZV-E1, which is far, far more expensive. Let's see how that looks. So this right here is the CineVlog mode. I'm just letting the camera do the work in intelligent auto and I turned it on the cine vlog, just tapped it on the screen there. It is in classic mode. This is the classic way to cine vlog right here. It has some other ones. Let's see if I can switch to them right now. Classic, clean. This is the clean mode. Do I look cleaner in this mode? Oh, chic. This is a French speaking country and I do feel very chic. Oh, the next one is fresh. Oh, right there. Look at the baby face. Fresh look on this kid. Right here, mono, it's gotta be black and white. Yep, black and white, hi. Cine vlogging in black and white. Look at this, I think it's cool that I can switch it while I'm actually recording. Now I feel like I'm in a French film. A French film about the colonization of the Ivory Coast. Man, oh man, this is getting historic. This is a historical cine vlog right now. What do you guys think? Pretty cool. Have those little quick references right there. I like that. This here is the plane from Lost. I actually took it to come here to Africa. I'm not so sure it's gonna be able to take me home. So I just wanted to test the little ZV-1 II, the uh, microphone there. It's got the little furry wind muff on top to cut out the wind noise. And there is a little breeze going, which is great because it is over 40 degrees when you factor in humidity here in West Africa. See that? I take my cameras to exotic places when I uh, wanna do tests just for nice backgrounds. And also my family's very angry at me right now for completely ignoring them to do these camera tests. But uh, I love having this small, lightweight little camera. This is just so great to whip out, you know, inconspicuous. Sure, my family knows, but everyone else is not paying attention to me at all because I don't have my big, giant, full-frame camera making everybody all uncomfortable. Little nice point and shoot. Pretty good. All right, I better go now. I'll check back in later. Oh, and of course I'm using the internal NDs on because you know, it's like 11 o'clock in the day here. A nice bright beach day. Gotta put those ND filters on. Okay, I really gotta go now. So it's the end of the day and I am sunburned everywhere. Well, not everywhere. This is not an inappropriate beach or an inappropriate video, but uh, plenty of sunburn all over the torso. Hurts a lot. And uh, even though I've showered three times today, it feels like I haven't showered 
in three weeks because it is very humid here. Now the good news is that this camera has held up really, really great. It's been fun to use, got a lot of different images, got some crocodiles on this thing, I got some family stuff. You know, it's a, it's really a great little travel camera. And now that the lens is wide enough at this 18 millimeter full frame equivalent, 18 millimeters, look at this, I am, look, I'm touching it right there. See, very close. It's uh, just great. Keeping that eye, autofocus, a very fun camera to take on vacation. I'm gonna go take uh, a fourth and a fifth shower right now. So obviously this is a fantastic camera, but let's get into the specifics of what this camera offers you and what it doesn't. So the camera goes up to 4K 30p. It doesn't do uh, 4K 120 or 4K 60. If you want the 120 or the 60, you're going to have to go to HD. Luckily, the HD on this camera is actually pretty good. Here I was close to a shoreline filming some slow motion waves, risking my life for you people. The stabilization this camera features is the active stabilization. It crops in about 10%, which is fine when you have an 18 millimeter lens. It doesn't have the new dynamic stabilization. It doesn't have that AI chip of the ZV-E1, and that is fine with this camera because I find the stabilization is quite good with this little camera. And if you find the stabilization is not good enough, it also records gyro data as the new Sony cameras do. You can run it through the free program Catalyst Browse that Sony provides, and then uh, you can get gimbal-like footage without a gimbal. So let's talk about that lens for a second. It goes from 18 to 50. It is a variable aperture. It goes from uh, f1.8 to f4. So as soon as you take it off 18, it will jump up. So at about 20 millimeters, it's f 2.2 and at uh, 24 millimeters is at 2.8 at 35 millimeters and up it is f4 it has that great new sony menu system but this one is even better because it has the regular sony touch menu but you can swipe up to get the quick menus you can also swipe to the side and get more options all touchable all controllable from the lcd itself which is fantastic the LCD is fine, it is 921,000 dots. In photos, it's really quite easy to see in the sunny weather mode. Unfortunately, when you are in video, you cannot do sunny weather mode, so you are stuck with a more dim screen. I'm looking at it right now, and I use my zebras for exposure anyway. Not an issue for me, but uh, I wish you could go into sunny weather mode, but perhaps that would affect the battery life. When it comes to the battery, it still uses that small Sony NP-BX1 battery, which makes the camera much more compact having a tiny little battery like that, but your battery life isn't going to be fantastic. In continuous video, it's really not that bad. Usually between 60 and 70 minutes, you will get of 4K recording if it is just continuous, but real-time use where you're zooming in and out, turning it on, messing with the menus, you usually get around 45 minutes so no real difference from the ZV-1. In terms of long continuous record times, I have found no overheating issues whatsoever on the ZV-1 Mark II, no matter how long you run it, connect it to USB power, which is great because a lot of people will want to use this camera for streaming. It has a mic jack, a USB-C port for power delivery, for charging, and also you can stream directly from the camera itself without any software, but that will only be at 720p if you want to use 1080 or 4K, you could use it traditionally like a regular camera and go through the HDMI port. And the HDMI port is a micro HDMI port here, no surprise, on the Sony ZV-1 Mark II. It has a really great on-camera microphone, the best on-camera microphone I have ever heard. And that makes this camera truly pocketable, truly portable because you don't need to take an external microphone. I actually had one in all the clips you saw where I was wandering around Africa in very unsafe conditions. I had a lavalier attached to my shirt and I was going to sync it up in post later, but I didn't do it because the audio sounded so great from the camera itself, I thought, why bother? And it's a unique microphone where you can put it in auto and it will detect the voices in front, it will detect the voices behind, or you can program it to make sure it just goes towards the front or just goes towards the back. Let's say you're behind the camera and you're narrating your fantastic documentary about the west coast of Africa. 
It actually has really good auto modes. First of all, the auto white balance, it's all I've been using all trip long. And uh, normally I don't like to use the auto white balance on my older Sony cameras, but these new ones, the ZV, E1, the ZV-1 Mark II, the auto white balance is very good. I trust it all the time, which is great because I get clouds. Things change here a lot when it comes to uh, your sun exposure. So I've been relying on the auto white balance and it's been a nice smooth transitions. It's been very good, but it has way more auto modes than that. First of all, the uh, intelligent auto is quite a good picture coming straight out of the camera. Let's take a look at that now. So this here is the image in Intelligent Auto, and I gotta say this is one of the best auto images I have seen out of any Sony camera or any camera, really. This camera is set up to go if you wanna just press record, go out into the world. Of course, you have the freedom to use the different profiles if you want and tweak it to your heart's desire, which I like to do because I am very fancy when it comes to my cameras, but this is certainly very usable, which is great on this camera because you're often taking it places where you wanna get quick shots of things and then put it back in your pocket before people take it from you. Because perhaps you've wandered into an area that you're not supposed to be in because you don't know this country very well. And the auto features, they keep on a coming. Of course, you saw in the previous footage, it does the uh, cine vlog mode, which puts the black bars on top there and actually gives it quite a nice image. Now the sun is coming out again. I'm gonna to have to rely on my auto white balance, but uh, the, the city vlog I think looks pretty good. I actually didn't even try the different modes where you can do golden or forest. And there's different uh, modes as well where you can kind of shift the white balance to give a different mood to your cine vlogs. That's it. I just, I tell you, I don't mind using it. I thought I would never use something like that, but it looks really good. Got the background defocus button, of course, that the ZV cameras like to have, which is really good for beginners who don't know how to use the ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. You just press the button, things are in focus, things not in focus. It has product showcase mode, which I don't even think is a beginner mode. That's a very useful mode. I don't have it on right now, but if I did, then it would just attach right to the phone and then I put it down and it go right back to my face. Let me just show you now. You turn on product showcase mode, boom, grabs the phone, goes back to me. Grabs the phone, goes back to me. Very nice. As a built-in three-stop ND, which has been indispensable for me here in Africa, it is on right now. It's been on the entire time because it's very bright and sunny here all of the time. When it comes to photos, it has plenty of photo features. It has the RAW versus JPEG. The Sony ZV-1F, for some reason, did not have RAW photos, which was very disappointing to me. I did buy that camera. I wish it had uh, RAW photos as well, but this one does, the ZV-1 Mark it has the raw photos. It also, you can do bracketing, you can do uh, long exposures, you can do, uh, the auto ISO has a minimum shutter, which I love in a camera. My ZV-E10 does not have that. I wish it did, but it doesn't. This guy has a minimum shutter in auto ISO, which is great when you want to avoid camera shake and get sharp pictures. Remember that USB-C port I mentioned for power delivery? Well, I'm using it right now because I was over there filming for more than an hour in the blazing heat and the battery finally gave out on me, so I just plugged it in to a USB power bank, and I am back in business, except my shirt has fallen a little. Let's get back to civility, shall we? Plus, right now in the shade, it is much more tolerable, and I do like to stay alive when I can. Did I mention that it was over 40 degrees here? Of course, the camera, even with the battery and the SD card, it weighs nothing, 292 grams. You barely feel it, carry it around all day, which is what I've been doing. It has been a joy to use due to the size and the weight. It has that amazing Sony autofocus, puts the box around your eye or animal, human or animal. And uh, if you want to track, you can just touch and hold to track and it will stick to the object like glue. You can also touch the screen to focus or one of the things I like to do when I'm taking photos, you touch the screen for to release the shutter. So it will focus and take the picture where you point on the screen. I find that very helpful when you have a camera that does not have an EVF. You can also use touch auto exposure. I haven't had to use that, I find, because I am usually filming my dumb face and uh, it prioritizes your face for exposure when you're using the auto modes, which is absolutely great. It's got focus magnifier, it has peaking displays, of course, the zebras that I've mentioned, any of the assist tools that you would want to see on a little camera like this are uh, probably here. And of course, Sony includes all of the picture profiles from one to 10. The only thing you're missing is S Cinetone. I would stay away from the log profiles for the most part, certainly S Log 3, because it is hard to grade that with an 8-bit camera. You don't have a ton of dynamic range 
and you don't have a ton of color information. So with one inch sensor and it being 8-bit, so I would stay away from S-Log3. You can get away with S-Log2 if you expose properly. Uh, I like using HLG3 picture profile a lot. That's the one I am using right now. And I also like using the Cine2 profile and I usually use either uh, the Paul Leeming LUT or uh, I will use a Phantom LUT if I want to use the S-Log2. The camera also has a button up top to quickly go through the uh, movie to photo to S and Q. So S and Q is another way, slow and quick. You can get, say, quick time lapses if you want it. You just uh, slow the frame rate down to say one frame per second, and then it can build a little time lapse without audio for you. And uh, if you wanted to do slow motion, you can go up to 120 frames per second, and then the camera will slow it down for you. Again, there is no audio, but it's great to have that built for you right there in the camera and you can also just use the regular movie mode and go with 120 frames per second in HD and then uh, slow it down yourself in post and that's good if you want to keep the audio and then do speed ramping things like that that's usually the one I go with but often I will you know grab the SNQ when it suits me so obviously this camera has a lot of great points but nothing in life is perfect except my hair right now Ooh, the humidity does my hair well but uh, let's talk about the drawbacks this camera and things that maybe are deal breakers for you. Number one, there is no EVF. Of course, nobody expected an EVF. I just find that it is much easier to take photos and take videos when you have a little EVF and it's nice and bright out like it always is here. And something that makes the lack of EVF worse is the fact that the screen in video, you can't set it to sunny weather mode, so it is quite dim. You're either going to have to rely on the camera doing the exposure for you, which luckily the camera is very good at, or use your exposure assist tools, things like zebras that I like to use. Because just looking at the image on the screen in video, you're not going to get a great representation of what your final image is going to look like, and that final image looks quite good. It has no 4K 60 or 4K 120. It's always nice to be able to do uh, more slow motion in the 4K, but uh, this camera doesn't have it, and that is too bad. The HD modes, as I say, are pretty good, pretty passable, so not the end of the world, for me anyway. It's only an 8-bit camera, there's no 10-bit, and that really prevents you from using S-Log3, which would give you maximum dynamic range, which is too bad. I would have liked to see 10-bit in here, but it makes less of a difference with these small one inch sensors. However, it would still be nice to have. The streaming straight from USB-C is only 720p, which is too bad. I would have liked to see that 1080 or 4K 30, because I think a lot of people will want to use this camera as a webcam or a streaming cam. So like I said, you can use the micro HDMI and use it as per usual with cameras. Still, it would have been nice to use it straight from the camera, just plug and play like the ZV-E1. The variable aperture is also a drawback. Of course, it would be really, really difficult to make a zoom lens like this on a compact camera be a constant aperture. It would basically be impossible from what I would figure with the F1.8 all the way through, but you do have to realize once you hit about 35 millimeters and up, you're at f4. So if you're zooming in to say 50 millimeters to get some shots, you're going to be at f4 and uh, you're not going to get a ton of background separation, especially because this is a one inch sensor. But that is it for the negative Nancy talk. And don't get me wrong, the pros far outweigh the cons of this camera. And as I said at the beginning, this is the best travel camera that I have ever used. And I am sure the people who buy it will be very happy with it. So I am shooting this studio test back here in Toronto. I just traveled 26 hours with two children under six, so that was a lot of fun. But I wanted to show you the ZV-1 Mark II in the studio because a lot of you will like to use it in the studio for, you know, content creation, streaming, podcasts, things like that. And I also just got finalized pricing from Sony. They say the ZV-1 Mark II will be at $899 and they also will offer, if you buy it in conjunction with an accessory package, you can get that accessory package for $50 off. And the Sony microphone, the ECM G1, you can get that for $50 if you bundle it as well. $50 off. So you can get a total of $100 off the accessories and the microphone if you bundle it with the lovely ZV-1 Mark II. There will be links in the description below. Well, let's go back to that handsome guy in Africa who's sweating his butt off to close out this video. For loaning me the ZV-1 Mark II and uh, I have to get on a plane now, go back home, immediately put this in the mail and then the only animals 
that I can be attacked by are the ones in the YouTube comment section. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.